Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's dive into the story of a tenant who thought he could outsmart his landlord and ended up regretting it big time. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Paying me with bounce checks? Okay. I own a historic downtown building that consists of several units that are each occupied by different businesses. Picture a strip mall, but in a historic building. Used to be an opera house before it was divided up by the prior owners. It's an attractive spot because I've also got private parking off the street and it offers my tenants a really nice storefront on our town's main street. It's not a major source of income for me, so I actually charge well under what I could, and I cover the cost of heating it, which is a very big deal in New England. I bought the place specifically so a friend of mine could start his dream business, and my other tenants are also all startups by folks trying to get into business for themselves. For those reasons, I tend to be very patient and forgiving with my tenants. I don't instantly freak out if the rent is late, I don't micromanage what they do with their space, and if they get in a bind, I work with them as long as they're honest and show me the same respect I do them. So when I describe the revenge I enacted on my former tenant, JJ, not real name, I want you to understand that I really did try to take the high road, but he effed around so much I felt he really needed to find out. Basically, a tenant who had been in the building when I bought it decided to retire and close his business. JJ was one of several prospective tenants, but it was first come, first served. He signed his lease and told me his check for the deposit and first month were in the mail. Being a trusting person, I gave him the keys and wished him well on opening a gaming store. I'm an old D&D gamer, so it tugged my heartstrings. He was a nice enough guy in person, always polite, but did this weird thing I associate with people who aren't as smart as they think they are. He tended to try to use a lot of $50 words to sound intelligent, but would use them incorrectly and would screw up basic grammar like your Y-O-U-R and your Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. I mention this because in some of our conversations, he got really condescending and he definitely thought he was going to pull something over on me. The promised checks never came, I told him and set up a time to get cash from him, and suddenly his kid was sick so he couldn't meet. He sent me $100 through a payment app and when I confirmed I got it, he ghosted me for a little bit instead of paying me the rest. And by then we were into the next month, so he was now late on two months rent, hadn't put down his deposit, and I started talking eviction if he didn't get his crap together. Throughout this, he never said anything about having a hard time making rent or needing extra time. If he had, I would have worked with him. Instead, it was lies and excuses and bullcrap. He begged for another chance, paid me a little more through the app, and then mailed me two counter checks. Both of them bounced, and when I told them they had, he blamed the bank. Then I found out he hadn't switched the utilities to his name, which is required in the lease, so I had to cover those to keep the power from being turned off in the dead of winter. He was now in the hole over 4K with me and wasn't paying, so I called the cops for the bounce checks. They gave him a mandatory five days notice to pay or charges would be pressed. He also filed a quit notice before I could file for eviction, which allowed him to avoid court. He got the payments to me finally by the skin of his teeth, after first trying to argue that he didn't need to pay the deposit because I'll just get it all back anyway. I advised him that's not how anything works. The first full payment was the deposit, so he was still short a month of rent, and if he didn't pony up, he'd be getting arrested the next day. I also reported him to the USPSIS for mailing checks he knew were going to bounce. I also decided I was going to get some petty vengeance by legally nickel and diming that deposit as much as possible. Hired professional cleaners and a professional locksmith to change the door locks instead of doing it myself. Three months worth of unpaid utilities, maximum late fees, fees for bounce checks. I took out everything allowable by law and whittled that $900 deposit down to about 20 bucks. The dumb butt had the temerity to text me a week after his eviction asking about the status of his deposit being returned. I advised him that, per state law, I'd be putting his check in the mail on day 30 from his original lease end date, not the quit date, so he'd be seeing that massive check in about six weeks. I then informed every landlord, realtor, and property manager I know in our area about him with a warning not to rent to him. 
So while I sympathize with people trying to break into business, don't bite off more than you can chew. And definitely don't try to F over someone who knows the law a lot better than you do. Hopefully you learned a lesson. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. You want keys? Cashiers check right now. And our second story. Cry havoc and let slip the crows of war. When I was 18, I got my first real job doing oil well testing in northern British Columbia. I also got my first workplace bully. The story's about my two-time petty vengeance on this a-hole. My bully, we'll call Nick, was just plain mean to me. He was the lead hand on our two-man crew and loved targeting me for abuse. I was young, kind of a nerd, and an easy target, he thought. Nick and I worked night shift together, and it was always an unpleasant experience for me. Initially, he'd just do crappy things like stay in the office trailer sleeping or watching movies while I did all the outdoor work, only waking to type up our daily report and email, make me stay outside for hours during minus 40 degrees Celsius conditions when there was no work to be done. This progressed to insults and juvenile name-calling and finally escalated to some physical violence. One time, when we are having breakfast, he opened up a coffee creamer before throwing it in my face the next incident, he kicked me in the crotch while we and some other crews were in the bar on a night off. I complained to the office about the physical assaults, but my overall boss didn't take me seriously. Nick said, you hit him first, I don't know who to believe, was his response. It all came to a head one day when we were driving from our hotel out to our work site. As I hopped in the truck to go to work, I noticed Nick's lunch bag down on the ground of the passenger side where I was going to sit. I moved his lunch bag as I climbed into the vehicle. Nick then grabbed his lunch kit and tossed it back at my feet, screaming at me to never touch my effing stuff. Taken completely aback by his shouting, I stayed quiet. When we were about 10 kilometers down the road, I nonchalantly rolled down my window before hurling his lunch bag out the window onto the highway. Nick was immediately irate about what I'd done. He slammed on the brakes, stopping the truck on the side of the highway, shouting threats and screaming at me to get the F out of his truck. He proceeded to get out and make his way to the passenger side, clearly intent on harming me. I wasn't having it, so I simply locked him out of his own vehicle. Red in the face, screaming obscenities, and realizing he was now locked out, I started to laugh before shimmying over to the driver's seat and turning around, heading back to the hotel. I left Nick on the side of the highway to hike back to town. Petty revenge number one, successful. I called up my boss on the way back, let him know what went down, and told him I quit if he wouldn't move me to another crew. He agreed, eventually telling Nick and I to stay away from each other, informing us we'd both be fired if we had another incident. Fine by me, I was just happy to be employed and rid of him. A few weeks later, myself and my new co-worker were heading back to town from sight. We pulled up to the hotel and I got out grabbing the trash bags we'd hauled back from work to dispose of. Making my way to the dumpster with two bags in hand, I noticed Nick's truck was parked in the lot, so instead of using the dumpster, I hucked the trash bags in the box of his truck. Foreseeing what would happen, I chuckled before returning to my hotel room. Now, northern British Columbia has these enormous crows everywhere, and they get into everything they can. They're relentless, just like seagulls, and our hotels seem to have an abundance of them. As expected, a murder of crows eventually descended on his truck, ripping open the bags of trash and spreading it all over the box of his truck. They also landed everywhere on the vehicle, covering it with crap and scratches. I got to watch all the carnage from my hotel room. I also got to witness Nick discovering this horde of crows making a mess out of his precious F-250. Laughing, I watched him clean up the mess. I ended up leaving that job and never faced any backlash from my weaponization of the local fauna. Nick has to live the rest of his life knowing the actions caused by his own raging stupidity screwed him, and people know about it. I guarantee you'll live rent-free in his head till the day he dies. A major win. If it were me, I would have crashed the truck from laughing so hard. And our last story. The neighbors want to take away part of my property. We bought a house a few months ago, unaware that our next-door neighbors were planning a massive addition. They're building into their driveway and managed to get a variance that allows them to build very close to our house. This has created a significant issue as their addition now blocks the view from our side window. When we expressed our concerns, they agreed to use light-colored siding on that wall to help minimize the impact. 
Now they've dropped another bombshell. Apparently, they made a deal with the previous owner of our house to take over a foot of property at the entrance to their backyard. This is because their addition has left them with an extremely narrow access path. Last week, their contractor took it upon himself to remove the shared fence on the property line without our consent so they could use a bobcat to get through. This not only damaged our trees that were against the fence, but the contractor had the audacity to deny any responsibility. After I expressed my dissatisfaction, he reluctantly put the fence back up. The whole situation left a bad taste in my mouth, especially since it created a safety hazard for our kids who play in the backyard. Now they're asking us to move the fence over by a foot for a few feet permanently to enlarge their access to their yard. The problem is that we're planning our own work, a deck that'll use the full width of our property and butt up against that fence. If we give up that foot, it'll reduce the size of our deck, which is already limited on that side of the house. On top of that, it means their gate would be attached to our house, which raises concerns about noise and other issues. Moving the fence would also make it difficult for us to put up a privacy screen to replace the trees we'll need to remove for the deck. It's much easier to have the deck and privacy screen follow a straight line. I'm really torn here. Should we agree to their request even though it creates limitations for our own plans? They agreed to the light-colored siding, but only because it's not visible from the street or the back. I can't shake the feeling that their request is actually costing us something significant. It annoys me that they sought a variance and made plans that require part of our property, and now we're being put on the spot to agree to something we don't really want to do? After considering all the issues and the impact on our future plans, I decided it was time to take action. Instead of agreeing to their request, I contacted the local authorities and filed a complaint about the unauthorized fence removal and the damage to our property. I'm so annoyed by the audacity of your neighbors to even ask this. I actually kind of wish I was put in this situation just so I could enjoy every millisecond of telling them to pound sand. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.